uh, overview of our current products and some of our uh, coming products, uh, and um, a brief overview, overview of the company. I'm going to skip through a few of the slides relatively quickly, but uh, feel free to stop me and ask questions at any point, and uh, otherwise we'll, we'll get started here. So um, overall, who am I, just for those who, who don't know, um, I've been, uh, uh, I'm Matt Edis, by the way, uh, core GNU Radio contributor since uh, 2001, which, yeah, okay. Uh, I uh, designed the USERP, the original USERP one in uh, 2003, uh, which we just called the USERP at the time because I uh, wasn't planning ahead for the two and all the others. So, um, but we've uh, uh, got a lot of interest, and uh, that caused me to uh, start Edis Research, and uh, which was uh, really to commercialize uh, the USRP. And so uh, Edis Research was formed in 2004 and w was acquired in 2010 by National Instruments. And uh, we are still growing and uh, still very uh, uh, um, uh, excited about GNU Radio. And um, we are hiring. That's, that's the most important bullet on there. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in uh, a job in uh, software radio uh, in, in any number of different areas, uh, let me know and um, you know, send along a resume or, or talk to me later. So uh, to clarify relationship, Edis Research, um, I mean, a couple of times people on the mailing list have said things like, uh, National Instruments owns GNU Radio and sort of silly things like that. Um, just to clarify, uh, GNU Radio is, of course, separate from Edis Research, but we're, we're uh, big fans of it and uh, significant developers uh, of uh, uh, parts of GNU Radio, and uh, GNU Radio Companion, for example, was created by um, Josh Bloom, who is, uh, of course, an Edis Research employee, and uh, of course, and we are also uh, sponsors of the of this conference. Um, this is hard not being able to see my own slides. It's, um, UHD uh, is our uh, uh, driver for our hardware, and. Um, it is uh, licensed under the GPL. Um, there are some applications where that may not work for you, so you can uh, discuss with us the alternative options. But certainly, if you're using it with GNU Radio, uh, the GPL is working for you with GNU Radio, so it's unlikely to be a problem that it's uh, that UHD is also GPL. And uh, UHD works on Linux, Mac, Windows, and embedded Linux, and uh, and of course supports all these other frameworks. But we're here to talk about GNU Radio, which is which is our favorite, and you know something like. 90% of our users are using GNU Radio, and uh, and uh, so that's that's really where our uh, our interest lies. Um, but one of the nice things about uh, UHD is that it supports all of our hardware transparently, so you can switch out between our ne network devices, our bus devices, or embedded devices uh, transparently to your application. And uh, assuming you're taking advantage of capabilities that are in that are exist in both uh, hardware devices, uh, you don't really need to change your software at all. And uh, that's really where a lot of the, the power of, um, of UHD comes in. And uh, this is just sort of a, a, a block diagram of how UHD fits in. So you would have, in this case, GNU Radio would talk through the GRUHD blocks uh, to the UHD API, which um, implements everything necessary to drive the hardware, both from control, like things like go to this frequency or set the gain to this, through uh, uh, send samples at time x or receive samples. Uh, and then that, that will in turn talk down into the uh, OS and, and kernel. And in the cases where uh, our hardware requires kernel drivers, it also includes the, the custom kernel modules that are, are also part of UHD. So for example, on our embedded device, there's a, a, a kernel module uh, in order to, um, to interface to it. And that that's a, a, you know, goes in the kernel, but it's logically part of a UHD. So the user uh, family of products. I'll go through these relatively quickly because I assume, I mean, most of you guys are familiar with uh, USERPs. Has anybody, you know, not, you know, seen or used or touched one? Okay, cool. So, uh, so you understand then the basic architecture uh, of the of the product family. We have uh, the the USERP motherboard that interfaces the computer to the analog section, uh, and that always has an FPGA and some sort of interface between the computer uh, and that FPGA, uh, whether that's USB or Ethernet or, or uh, an embedded uh, um, link. 
and, uh, and of course the A to Ds and D to As to capture the uh, signals that are uh, typically quadrature baseband signals, so IQ modulation and uh, the other miscellaneous hardware that goes with it. And of course there's interchangeable RF front ends which we call daughter boards and uh, those for the most part are quadrature up and down converters with other um, miscellaneous RF hardware. So this is just a, a block diagram of, uh, this happens to be an uh, N uh, network series device. So you have your gigabit ethernet, the ethernet phi on the, on the motherboard, then uh, logic for uh, network driving and control in the FPGA, and you, you know, your DSP, whatever, um, uh, DSP, whether you use the baseline or your custom DSP, it appears over here, A to D's, D to A's, and, and your daughter board. And then of course there's miscellaneous other uh, circuitry for uh, clocks and, and um, uh, other hardware control things. Now typically in the FPGA, um, in the standard image that we, uh, that we provide, you've got digital up and down converters, decimation and interpolation, uh, um, data formatting, that sort of thing. Uh, all, all, the, all the things to make the hardware work that you really don't want to have to worry about when you're doing your, um, your application. Uh, it takes care of the precise timing, the tuning, all, all, all those sorts of things. So your application can make calls that, like go to this frequency instead of send this you know, hex number to this register on a spy bus somewhere. You just, uh, the, the API, uh, hi, hi, the, the combination of the API and the FPGA uh, hide all that complexity from you so you don't have to deal with it. You, you can, of course, uh, you know, work at that lower level if, um, if, you, if uh, that fits with what you want to do, but really mo for most people, it's just easier to use the API abstractions and, uh, and, and you know, concentrate on your radio. So current products, uh, we have the line of daughter boards. Um, one that's coming soon that you may not be familiar with is the CBX, uh, which was very similar to the WBX and the SBX, but it is uh, 1.2 to 6 gigahertz, uh, but a similar architecture otherwise. So the same types of quadrature up and down converters, uh, attenuators for gain uh, control, both on transmit and receive, uh, that sort of thing, and the same you know, 40, 40 plus megahertz of bandwidth. And uh, you, should, uh, you should see something, uh, an announcement about that officially uh, before the end of the year. So this is a picture of a, a USERP, uh, I think it's a USERP 2 with an SPX daughter board. Um, so you're all familiar with the, the daughter board here and then underneath is the FPGA and the A to Ds and the D days. And then the RF happens all on the daughter board and then this is your front panel. So uh, you're probably, again, all, all familiar with the N series of devices. These are connected to uh, your computer with uh, gigabit ethernet. And that allows you 25 megahertz of RF bandwidth if you're doing 16-bit samples or 50 megahertz if you if you're, have an application that can accept 8-bit samples. And uh, it's available with two different sizes of FPGA. And we have the A to Ds and D to A's to, to go with that. And this is sort of our, uh, the, the, the most common configuration that people use uh, today um, uh, for, uh, for um, usurp applications. And it has uh, also this inbox GPS DO, the, that, that's, uh, when we say GPS DO, that's a, a master oscillator, in this case an OCXO, an, oven, uh, an ovenized oscillator that is tuned by uh, a GPS receiver so that it has very precise frequency. So uh, the OCXO without a GPS connection is something like five to 10 parts per billion accuracy. Um, and with, with GPS on it over the long term, it's, it's essentially perfectly follows the, uh, the GPS um, frequency uh, as broadcast. So, you know, arguably better than, you know, fractions of parts per billion. And, uh, and so that's an option that's uh, on, on this device and uh, on the embedded devices. And we're, we're putting that on all of our future devices as well um, because uh, it, it, it uh, seems to help people in a lot of different applications. Uh, in particular, uh, in the, the, the previous talk was about uh, distributed beam forming. And, uh, and so uh, having a device like this actually makes distributed beam forming easier because it, it will uh, keep the oscillators on the different devices much closer. And so you can send your updates at a much slower rate. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, 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 as we've also seen, it's possible to, to do those sorts of things without uh, a GPS geo, but it certainly, uh, it certainly makes it a lot easier. So this is a picture of the N210 uh, that many of you are familiar with. 
So and then we have the uh, embedded device uh, series, uh, which has been around uh, coming up on two years now. And uh, so again, logically very similar to our other devices, except instead of having an external laptop, let's say, connected to the device, uh, it has the computer built in to the box. So uh, inside the box, you have a, 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 an embedded processor, in this case, an ARM Cortex-A8, which is part of the OMAP chip. And uh, this uh, allows you to have a fully standalone box. So you just run power and ethernet to it, and it's, uh, it's a, you know, a full radio. Um, you don't have to uh, have an external computer. Um, because this uses UHD like our, all of our other devices, the same code will run on it. If you've written it in Python, you don't even need to recompile. If it's in C++, you just recompile for this architecture, and, uh, and it will, um, it, it will you know, runs GNU Radio straight in the box. It's got a full Linux distribution. Um, and uh, and we've, we've seen a lot of uh, very interesting applications uh, of this. Earlier, Jonathan talked about uh, migrating applications that are developed on a desktop uh, with an N-series device, let's say, to the embedded. Um, and uh, the embedded, of course, has somewhat less processing power than your laptop. And so in some cases, you need to um, migrate parts of the algorithm to the FPGA. But if the embedded device has enough processing power for you, you don't even need to to do that. Um, has any, any, who's used an, um, uh, an embedded series device in E100? Okay, great. So uh, this is a picture of the E100 and uh, it, it, you'll see it has Ethernet on it as well as USB, but unlike the uh, network series, the Ethernet is not really intended for sending the samples because the samples go from the uh, FPGA in the computer to the computer that's inside the box. In this case, the Ethernet is really intended for uh, networking, uh, you know, basically putting this device on the, on the internet as opposed to uh, uh, sending samples to a host computer, because the host is, again, as I say, in the, in the box. This is uh, sort of the architecture of the device. So you have your, your processing node here, this high-speed bus that connects to the FPGA, and then the same sort of daughterboard interface and GPSDO and, and that sort of thing that the, uh, the network series devices have. And, um, and then here are your connections to the front panel, whether it's the Ethernet or the USB and, and the like. So um, highlights of the, the embedded series device uh, or that you know runs real Linux. It's um, you know not as uh, it's a real full distribution. You can actually run Ubuntu on there, but we typically run uh, Open Embedded, uh, which uh, fits very well with the the um, sort of the, the embedded uh, uh, nature of the product. Um, and you can develop either directly on the device, or you can develop on uh, on a, a network series device or a bus series device, let's say, and uh, and deploy on the embedded because it uses UHD. You know, again, no, no, uh, no changes to your uh, application. So um, we, we've seen people use uh, the embedded devices in a lot of really interesting ways. Um, network test beds, sensor nodes, uh, Pico cells, that sort of thing. Um, because it's all in one box and, and you, again, you don't need the separate computer, uh, it works really well. You could just sort of, you know, stick them on the light post or in the, uh, in the, you know, in the drop ceiling or things like that and set up uh, moderate scale networks uh, quite quickly. And, and again, because it's running a real Linux and you have uh, Ethernet connections back to each of these devices, you can remotely administer them and, uh, and you don't, so you don't have to go, you know, sort of go to each device and, and modify things locally. You can, you can control it all over the, the network, uh, the Ethernet network. So um, then, uh, does anybody have any questions about our existing products or, or anything like that? Yes, in the back. Uh, I, I'm, the question was about uh, people doing Pico cells with the embedded? Okay. So, um, uh, Open BTS runs directly on the UH uh, on the uh, E100, um, and so it, it, you you end up with a, a single box uh, uh, Pico cell, and you so you can run a full. Uh, oh, microphone. Yes. So you end up with a single uh, box uh, GSM base station, and so we have a number of people who um, who were using o Open BTS with separate computer, and and you know they're able to consolidate that into one box, and it. <clears throat> It helps with deployment and uh, 
because you know it's it's much smaller and it's lower power. Uh, so so there's a lot of that, and and we're we're seeing uh, more and more uptake on that. Uh, and the other question was about the the public safety. So um, I, I've seen them used as uh, as a box to sort of uh, sort of a, a deployable uh, monitoring system for a, a public safety network. Um, and, and because it's full duplex capable, you could you could actually do uh, more complicated things like uh, you know make a, a full public safety repeater, an APCO kind of device as well. Um, and I think um, you know I, I think we're seeing some people start to move in that direction. But um, uh, the, the the application I was specifically thinking of was a, a monitoring application uh, where you can listen to many many public safety channels at once. Uh, consolidate that, report it back over the network, and you can stick these devices around a metropolitan area and, and you know, uh, uh, sort of hear the whole network from one central location. Uh, again, the, the, the having the Ethernet on there uh, for the sort of the internet working of the devices is, is very helpful. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're. I'm just wondering if you've seen or heard anything about people instead of talking through the internet for it, maybe installing some driver for a 3G or 4G. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so you mean using the sort of the, the public uh, cell phone network as the backhaul, uh, not, not necessarily for samples, but for internet working of the devices? Uh, I, I have. Uh, we, we have had a number of people ask about um, connecting to the, many of those uh, sort of uh, data modem devices are USB interface, and I believe they have um, Linux drivers. So we have had some people try that, and uh, and I think that's that's worked uh, for them. You can also, of course, you know, since again it's Ethernet, um, anything that can then take Ethernet, um, you know, and backhaul it by whatever mechanism you could use. So. Um, so that that's the other way, but yeah, certainly it's more convenient if you can just plug a like a 3G dongle on there, and uh, and I do I, I do believe people have done that. We have not uh, sort of verified that internally that 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 um, that works, but certainly in, in principle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, quite a bit of. Um, uh, Mesh networking research being done on the embedded devices. That's one of the, the sort of uh, bigger areas that uh, that they're they're sold into is is people uh, prototyping different mesh network and ad hoc network protocols. And uh, you know by having it all in one device, again you can have several of them without having the the infrastructure of having a, a computer with each one. And so you can just sort of deploy these boxes. So yeah, we have a number of them have gone into test beds of uh, four uh, mesh network protocols uh, on the sort of 10, 10 nodes sort of t uh, scales. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna. Uh, go on to our, our new products. So I'm going to be telling you guys about um, uh, a few new a few new products that we're we're working on that that should be coming soon. Um, I've already told you about the the CBX daughter board, um, and then the, the next uh, three uh, we'll, we'll go through. Those are all uh, motherboards. So so the B200 is a, a low cost all in one uh, solution that uh, it, it does two way MIMO, so two by two, uh, 150 meg to six gig and uh, uses a Spartan 6 FPGA and a USB 3 interface. And this will get you more bandwidth than uh, the USB 2 of, of our B100 or the, the USERP uh, 1. And, uh, and, and you get 56 megahertz of uh, instantaneous RF bandwidth out of each uh, antenna. Um, you can't necessarily get all of that over the USB, but, um, but you can get more than, than over gigabit Ethernet, for example. So, uh, uh, but anything you could process in the device, you could do 56 megahertz on each antenna. And this is a capable full duplex operation, and it uh, uh, puts out you know our standard 50 to 100 milliwatts of of power. And so this is this is what the device looks like. It's about the size of a paperback book, um, and uh, you know, of course, again because it's uh, UHD compatible, we'll work with um, all all the software that you uh, have uh, created up till now. Um, one of the nice aspects of this device is it has a very flexible clocking. So if you're doing 
uh, let's say UMTS and 61.44 megahertz is your ideal sample rate. You can set the sample clock to 61.44. If you're doing uh, GSM and you want a 52 megahertz sample clock, you can set it to 52. Uh, it's very uh, it's very flexible in that sense. You can uh, you can basically choose your your sample clock rates. Standard one PPS and 10 megahertz reference. Yes, PPS and 10 megahertz reference. It'll also have an option for the onboard GPS DO as well, um, and. Uh, uh, Spartan 6, you know, and um, and all that. So, uh, you know, we're very excited about this as a sort of a lower cost um, device. Yes. Is this the, what range you get through the USB? So that that is uh, I, right now we're getting 30 plus low 30 megahertz bandwidth. Um, we're we're working on pushing that higher. Um, but it, it, it's a very strong function of the USB hardware on your computer, uh, your kernel, and there's a, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in there. There's, you know, the sort of the theoretical limit for for USB is is going to for USB three is going to be uh, significantly higher than what is actually achievable. Um, USB three is still sort of in its very early stages, and the the host chipsets are of widely varying quality. Um, it, it's very similar to what we saw. I mean, when the user one first came out where we were using USB 2, when we first started, we had to recommend people what uh, USB chipset to buy because the certain chipsets just weren't able to keep up. And so it's sort of in that kind of state now. As uh, USB 3 matures, we think it'll, it'll level out and we'll be able to have a solid, yes, you can get this bandwidth as long as you have a reasonable computer. But um, right now, it, it, it's, it's variable. But still, you know, significantly better than USB 2 and, uh, and somewhat better than uh, gigabit Ethernet. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what the device looks like. Um, it's no, there's no daughter boards. It's an integrated RF, so uh, the the box doesn't. You don't need to be opening and changing out daughter boards and things. Okay. So now uh, the next up is the E200. So so uh, sorry, the last one was the B200, B for bus, of course. This is the E200, which is our new embedded device, um, it, and it's it's logically very similar to our last, uh, our E100. Um, the big difference really is. Is one you, you get a much more powerful processor. Um, it's a dual core, Cortex A9, um, and, and uh, a much bigger FPGA. And uh, the other is that it shares the same RF front end as the B200. So it's two by two MIMO, 150 megahertz to six gigahertz coverage, and um, you know so the 56 megahertz, megahertz of RF band with it will all be very similar to the other one, uh, except this. Uh, but the big, the big thing about this is that it is a small handheld enclosure and is battery powered. So um, the way we came up with the size for this was we pretty much we took my cell phone out and measured it and, and we said that, that's our goal. So this is uh, cell phone size and actually I, I've since upgraded my cell phone to a Samsung Galaxy 3 which is massive. So this is actually now I can say this is smaller than my cell phone because I got a new cell phone. Um, but it's, it, it will be thicker than a typical cell phone at, at a little bit over an inch thick, but uh, the, the overall dimensions you know, are, uh, are cell phone size. And it's uh, battery powered and of course runs a full Linux, Linux distribution, uh, which is um, uh, of course based off of our E100 software. So code that ran on your E100 or your other devices should just port directly to this. And of course this will expose many more uh, features and capabilities, but the, um, it, it'll be a, a, you know, in all ways a complete superset of, the, of what the, uh, the E100 does. Um, so, you know, and of course GNU Radio will run on the device. It's a UHD uh, 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 compatible. And um, yeah, and this, this is what it looks like. This is the rendering of the enclosure. Uh, and so you can see there's the, since two-way MIMO, we have our standard RXTX, AUX RX, and then the other antenna, RXTX, and then AUX RX again. Uh, and then we have GPS and uh, 10 megahertz slash PPS, sorry, I should say a GPS input and a, uh, an external synchronization input that can be used for, you can either put in 10 megahertz, you can put in PPS, you could put in iRig B, all sorts of different stuff. Um, flat uh, SD card for storage, and then that's a power switch there. And uh, that is our audio jack. What are, what are the connectors on this? Uh, these are SMB. And actually, these, were, these are shown here are SMAs, but it'll actually be SMB on the shipping product as well. So SMBs are smaller um, and uh, not quite as common as SMAs, but they're, they're yes? Um, what are your, what's going to be your retail pricing for both devices? And I can compete against Epic Solutions with this one in Chicago. They're based out of Chicago. Okay, so I haven't. Uh, um, uh, we, we have not set final pricing on any of these. If but you can beat 4,500 on that. 
We're gonna okay. by by at least a f at least a factor of two. Okay. We'll beat that. You're, yes. You're familiar with their yes. Yeah. Yes. Overpriced, but sweet, but overpriced. <laughs> so so this I I think um, yeah. We've not set final prices on, on either of these devices yet, but they're both very, uh, I think everybody will be very uh, uh, happy with the, the prices we do uh, eventually settle on. They'll be uh, significantly lower than anything you could uh, find comparable. Um, this is the back, so you can see the gigabit ethernet uh, connector. Again, not really for sending samples, although you could, um, but really more for networking the devices together. And then that's a, a standard USB, so you could put a Wi-Fi dongle, uh, flash dongle, uh, Bluetooth dongle, that sort of thing on there. And then this is a USB console and power supply. Uh, it, it'll have a lithium ion battery uh, in it. And that, this is an internal drawing. So the, there's a radio, this, this shows the main card. There's a radio card that attaches on top of it. And then on top of that will be the battery. And uh, so, um, yeah, so it, it'll fit in your pocket. It'll, you know, run for, you know, several hours. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I, I really anticipate a lot of exciting new applications that people are going to come up with, uh, different ways to use this. Um, you know, I, I've been in, in software radio for a long time now, you know, over 10 years with the GNU Radio Project and, and, and longer when you uh, look at some of the other things I worked on. And this was really always the device that everybody wanted. It was this, this handheld, battery-powered, everything radio, you know, that, that can fit in your pocket. And it's only... Um, you know, sort of now that the technology is really available to do this sort of thing. And so, um, you know, we're, we're very excited about this. this uh, you know, we, we anticipate this being used in all sorts of interesting uh, ways. This is a picture of the actual board. So we have these boards, they're up, they're running, they're booting Linux and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So um, we're, we're hoping to uh, have sort of beta users in, in early first quarter and, uh, and shipping not long after that. Yes, Tim in the back. So it does not have a touch screen. It has, it has one button for power. Um, and, and so it is not a touch screen. Um, we, if there is interest in that, we, we, we have discussed doing a touch screen version to follow on. But for right now, it's, a, it's you know, as you can see, a, a metal box with no, with no touch screen. Um, we have, using USB, you can have touch screens. And, and we've already booted it with one of these little mini uh, touch screens, you know, that works over, uh, over USB uh, that are supported by X windows and, and things like that. So you could have an external display now. Um, uh, internal display is something we're considering, and if there was a, if people really wanted that, um, then, then we may do that for sort of an E250 to follow on. So we'd, we'd appreciate feedback on that if, that, if that's, uh, you know, useful. Yes? Okay, so if you see the next um, slide, the next product after this, it it's, it's still uses the traditional daughter board interface. Um, we're really, we're expanding the product line and there's a couple of directions we're going. Um, the, the integrated RF in this is not going to be the same level of performance as our discrete RF uh, uh, as in on our existing daughter boards, which, which really have very high dynamic range and uh, very, um, you know, very good RF performance. Um, the, the Integrated chip, it, it's amazing for an integrated chip, but it's not going to compete at that level. But it's much lower power. So in a device like this, it's smaller and it's lower power. You have to go with the integrated device, much like the cell phone that you might be emulating or the, you know, or, or the other device. But uh, in our desktop sort of devices, we're going to be continuing with the, the um, discrete RF solutions that, that you've seen from us in the past. So those aren't going away. Yes? So it, it, when transmitting it, it's, it's 50 to 100 milliwatts of RF output power. Again, that'll be band dependent. Um, and, uh, but uh, an overall power consumption uh, will vary widely between, you know, depending what you're doing. Are you idling? Are you receiving? Are you transmitting? Are you doing both antennas? Right? So, I, you know, full bore, you might be at 8 watts or something. But, um, you know, in, in, a, in a more uh, uh, simple configuration, it, we're looking at keeping it under two watts, and in, 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 um, at least on a on a sort of idle, 
Linux running state. So uh, th that, that, of course, th that's something, obviously, we're still in the development process on, so I can't give you, you know, solid power numbers, but th that's, th that's the range that we're looking at. Uh, so the, the final battery specs for what size we can fit in there and all that is not set, but our goal is to have, uh, you know, sort of six to eight hours um, in the sort of intermittent usage, mostly idle mode. But uh, again, we, we, don't, we don't have final numbers on that. Yes? Yes, so there will be, a, you will be able to order this in a configuration with no battery, with no enclosure if you want to put it in some other device that already has its own battery. So yeah, this, I anticipate, you know, there'll be this, the standard configuration that, that um, you know, everybody gets and then they'll, you know, the, the sort of off the, off the, you know, order from the web page and then there'll be the OEM version and, and uh, maybe a, a version with a big battery. Again, we haven't finalized all these things, but there'll definitely be an option to have no battery, no enclosure, and just uh, be able to integrate it into a larger system. Okay, so that's the back inside view, and that's the top view. And um, I, I, I actually have one with me if anybody wants to sort of feel it and hold it. I don't know, um, uh, but it, it's uh, in any case, it, it's uh, ho hopefully going to be in the beta in uh, the early part of the next year, and uh, and shipping not long after that. So uh, we see, you know, people using these for a, a lot of uh, different purposes, uh, from small UAVs, spectrum monitoring, sensor nodes, uh, portable signal analysis, uh, software-defined uh, HT for the hams in the, in the crowd. Um, you know, it, it, there's there's sort of no end to, to the uh, different things you can do with it, and so um, we're excited to see what our uh, our, our customers uh, come up with for it. Uh, and of course, expandable by USB, so you get flash drives, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know, anything else. Any, basically, anything you can connect to a uh, Linux machine over USB, you'll be able to connect to this. So that, that'll be your sort of expansion bus for it. Okay, so the final, uh, the final one is, this, is the B250. This is uh, a PCI Express and 10 gigabit connected device. Um, you can use it in either mode. You wouldn't use it in both at once. You would pick based on, you know, uh, 10 gigabit will give you, uh, you know, longer distance. PCI Express will give you lower latency, that sort of thing. Uh, so, but this device is, uh, will have a much bigger FPGA uh, than our existing devices and um, onboard, uh, significant amounts of onboard RAM and, uh, and we'll have two-way MIMO uh, in the box. And so the, uh, the plan is that you, you could stream, you know, huge amounts of bandwidth in and out um, with very low latency uh, to do, you know, real serious wi uh, wireless protocols like 802.11ac, which is, is, is still yet, um, you know, still very new. Um, it will be LabVIEW FPGA capable, which would help with programming the FPGA, and uh, have aux IO for, um, for controlling external devices, and uh, it'll be half rack half rack width, one rack unit high, and that'll give you two antennas. And so uh, this is a front and a back view, so you can see the RF and the, and the LEDs, sort of the user uh, interface, and then the back side we have, uh, this would be the PCI Express interface. So it's PCI Express over cable, it's not a, a board that plugs in the computer. There would be a separate board that plugs in the computer and you connect via the cable. Or you can connect by uh, 10 gigabit ethernet, and then we have a, a MIMO port, again, for cascading multiple devices like we do with the, uh, the, the current N200 series. And that's power and fans, of course. So, and these would, uh, two of them next to each other, we would give you four antennas in a one rack unit space. And so we're very uh, excited about this. You can get really high density in a, in a data center kind of applications. And, um, you know, with the, both the USB, uh, the, sorry, the ethernet, uh, 10 gig ethernet and the PCI Express, you can, uh, you know, remote the device, um, uh, you know, quite a distance away or, or get, um, you know, very low latency communications. And this is inside the box. This uses our traditional daughter board. So you could put a WBX, SBX, or CBX in there. Actually, you can put a pair of them in there. Um, and that will give you the two-way MIMO. And then, of course, we have the FPGA under a heat sink and, you know, F, uh, PCI Express and all other various interface circuitry there. Um, so in general, our, our new devices, the E200 and the B250, are using the Xilinx 7 Series FPGAs, which will allow 
uh, common FPGA designs uh, among them, uh, easier development of uh, portable IP, and uh, UHD will be growing to expose uh, more of this uh, FPGA capability to the user uh, at the application level so that you don't have to worry about partial reconfiguration or, or, or bit streams or, or plugging in different uh, uh, computation blocks. It'll all be uh, handled for you through the UHD interface. And um, we're working with uh, outside groups to enable easy FPGA programming, um, which of course we all know uh, FPGA programming is not nearly as easy as GNU radio programming and Python and GRC and all that. And so we're working on uh, uh, easing that uh, for everybody. So um, that's that's uh, what I've got. Uh, does anybody have any any questions for for me about any of those? Okay. Well, great. So, you know, in summary, uh, go GNU Radio. You know, we're we're uh, uh, you know very um, uh, enthusiastic supporters and 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 members of this community and. Uh, Thank you all for for coming. Uh, we're we're glad to have everybody here uh, for the conference. So, yes. Sorry, just um, a non-technical question. Mm -hmm. You as a sponsor of this event has some cards we can bring to this lady. I'm I'm sorry. You have business cards for them, so you can take them back to. Sure. Store. Yes. Yes. Yeah, just come up to me afterwards. Yes. The B250, we're looking at beta in late first quarter um, and uh, delivery uh, of you know, shipping systems not, not too long after that. Um, again, we don't have a price set on that, but um, uh, I, I would say that the price will be in keeping with our, the, the sort of price scale of our existing devices. I think it's great to 